Tag, the Gates. Welcome to the Damn Bar for another Big B beer review. All right. Obviously, I'm my my pathetic attempt at German there. I obviously have a German beer, none other than the oldest brewery in the world. And it even says right there, the world's oldest brewery, Weihen Stefaner, original premium. So, I'm taking it, this is their main one, their flagship one. I've actually had several Vor from them, five Hinsefaners, and I'm thinking Vorsteiner for some reason. I've had Vorsteiners too, but my Hinsefaner, I've had several, but I've never had their flagship, their main beer, the, the original premium. So, I'm guessing original premium by that name means that it's their main beer. So, it's obviously brewed and bottled by the by Rich Stratz Brewery. You know, I even took German, you know, in high school, but I wasn't in high school for very long and I didn't take it for very long, so <clears throat> obviously it shows. Well, I'm guessing it says by Rich Stratz Brewery. By Hans Stefan Freising, Freising, Germany. So, it says. Store dark and keep cool, 56 to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, I need to warm this baby up. That little mini fridge right there has a damn near freeze. And, and most German beers, every one that I've had, I've found out that the more that it warms up, the better it gets. So, wow, since so 1040, the year 1040, not 1040 p.m. All right. By Hen Stefaner Original Premium. So the long maturation period provides the beer with a strong character that pairs well with hearty dishes, but also with salads, poultry, and stews. Nice. Nice. So 21 IBUs. Okay, nice. Okay. Oh. And my tablet just took a crap. All right, who cares? That's all you need to know. 21 IBUs, 5.1% ABV. All right. She got you a nice view of the, the crown. And I actually do, I didn't think about it. I probably should have taken this, uh, or taken this out of the refrigerator before this. Kind of let it warm up. But too late now. Let's get her open. That is nice. Garen Teeter Reinheit. Garen Teeter Reinheit. I don't know if you can read those little letters on there. So. And I'm sure it usually says on here, brewed according to the... And it doesn't. Which is weird. The Ryan Heiskabot. It's not on here. But yet with their wheat beers, they'll have it on there. And a wheat beer actually is against the Ryan Heiskabot. At least the original one. Alright. I have yet to have a German beer that I have not liked. They all have like a distinctive, delicious, high quality flavor that's just world renowned. Oh, go shove it up your butt with your damn noises. Stupid freaking tablet being stupid. So stupid. So, delicate aromatic notes are not only perceptible in the aroma, but in the flavor. Well, let's find out. Look at that. That is nice. It looks like a spongy, dry foam for the head. About one fat finger almost, not even barely. That is clear. Look at that. That is very clear. I know there's some, there's a little bit of, you know, we'll see you pour an ice cold beer in a glass. And this glass here that I have is just a little old and scratched up. <clears throat> nice. That's pretty good clarity though. Eventually this glass is going to be gone too. These, these ones that I get like this are so cheap that you wipe them dry with a cloth and they scratch the hell out of them. Cheap ass pieces of crap. Nice. Very light in color. I'm going to say it's about a four. 
you know? There's not enough light here. Let's just get some outside light coming in there. Yeah, this doesn't help. Anyways. <clears throat> nice. Now, I know I didn't smell it right out of the bottle, but there's still some in here. And there's not really a lot of aroma. Maybe because I already poured it out. But this is getting malty. Hmm. And just add to it if you can. Did it? Uh, not much. I'm actually surprised at how fast the head is dissipating on this beer for a German beer. Quite interesting. So, no head taste today, huh? <laughs> Let's just dive in. Salut. It's definitely got that similarity to all German beers. That nice maltiness. This one's a little bit more sweeter. It's got a bit of a sweetness in the beginning, a malty sweetness. I'm not talking like I'm getting slapped with sugar, you know what I mean? Mm. But it's definitely got like a sweetness in the beginning and a crisp finish. About medium, light medium in the body. A nice crisp mouthfeel. More malty than anything. I don't really. I guess that you get the hops and the finish, and it's very subtle. Very subtle. This actually is not as impressive as most German beers that I've had, which actually I was kind of expecting. It's the original premium, so this is probably like, you know, their, the one that they pump out the most, like their Bud Light or something. I don't know. I doubt it, but either way, it's a good beer that I could enjoy with some bratwurst and hell. I don't know if this one would be up to par to cook with. You know, just it's lacking that that flavor profile for cooking. You know, like I'm myself personally. Anyway, I would not cook with Bud Light or Budweiser or Bush. I've done it. You know, I'm not saying it just because it's a. Pre I've done it. I've cooked with them and I've cooked with a lot of different beers, trying to make brats and different things. But mainly brats. That's my main go-to. I wanted to find the perfect way to cook a brat, and. You'll be surprised, I think, if you watch my channel and you've seen my episodes, I've mentioned it before and you all know what I'm about to say. Ice House Edge. They don't make it no more. I've heard it might come back, I don't know, but you can also use Steel Reserve. That beer is the best beer to make bratwurst, beer brats, in my opinion. And I've used a lot of different beers to do it. All my favorites, all those expensive ones, I've, I've used a lot of different beers to make brats, and that one has always been the best beer flavor. This would be a great beer to drink while eating that brat. Mm hmm For sure. This is crushable. I could be in Germany just like, like chugging these down by the case, you know? Yeah. Nice. All right. So get onto the grade. On Untapped, with over 80.4 thousand reviews, it gets a 3.6. 0.6. So, that's okay. It's not bad. It's above the, uh, the mid-range. Beer Advocate, a 91 out of 100, with an average of 4.09 out of 2,671 reviews. Not bad at all. That's damn near, that's very good. So, for me, would I buy this one again here in the United States at $4.70 a bottle? I probably would, but the next question is, is it going to ring my memory bell? Am I going to like think back on Vihinstefaner and think of this one? The answer is no. No, I've had other Vihinstefaners way better and other German beers way better that I'm going to try to get for that price that are about the same price for four dollars and seventy cents a bottle for this size bottle too that I'm gonna get before this so otherwise though, I'm not gonna turn it down this is definitely a very high quality beer it's delicious so big B beer view grade and I'm gonna give this one a B plus a B 
B plus. Which is, I don't know, I, I have to go back to my records, this might be the first German beer that I've given a B plus to, or anything under an A, because I love German beers. Mm-hmm. So, hey, I hope you all enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. If so, please hit like, subscribe, share. I could use them all. Please, please, please. Um, if you like watching these reviews, because I like watching reviews like this, check out my uh, group on f Facebook, Beer Reviewers United. There's a bunch of people out there that are part of this group, over 200, that are leaving reviews and stuff, all kinds, written reviews, uh, YouTube reviews like this, and some are actual professionals that work for companies in Germany and other, you know, part in Israel. Awesome reviews from around the world that my group, I've been loving it since I created it. So check that out, Beer Reviewer United. The initials are BRU, Brew. <laughs> so just give that a, uh, a check out and join it up and, and I hope to catch y'all here at the damn bar for the next review. Until then, salut.